you know, we didn't sit down 10 years ago in a business plan and said, to be successful, we need to work out how to integrate ourselves with the community. We passionately love the business. We love nothing more than to see people here happy and having a good time. And so, you know, my wife and I who run the business with our great, you know, fantastic staff, that's our focus every day. It's not how can we maximise profit? How can we make more money out of popcorn today? It's what can we do to make people happy? And you know, we, we don't get many complaints. We mainly get compliments here. But when we do get a complaint, we take it really seriously because we want people to be happy. I mean, we are, that is the business we're in. Because Yarraville and The Sun now seem to have a, a name out there, we, we, have people, we see people out there who clearly aren't from Melbourne. You know, they've got their backpacks, they've got their cameras. And, and you find out that they're from interstate or they're from New Zealand. And we get a lot of people from England who have heard, you have to come and check out this, this, this cinema in this village. And uh, there was a guy here from New York just a few weeks ago who was running around taking photos saying, we just don't have this, in it, like in New York. And we thought, really in New York? Surely it's you know, the height of culture. But he said, no, no, there's just nothing like this uh, where he's from. And so he was very excited. But the thing I notice here is people walk up to the counter at 10 o'clock in the morning and say, what's on today? They've made a decision that they want to come to the Sun Theatre, they want to see a film because they like the environment, they like the experience. Whereas people at other cinemas tend to go because they've looked up and said, I want to see that film. I, yes, I, I've, I've decided I want to see that film, I'll go and see it at my local cinema. There are so many people here who, who literally come every week. You know, it might be at 10 in the morning, it might be at seven o'clock on a Monday, but whatever it is, there are a lot of people who have found the regular time that they just come every week and see a film, so it's part of their routine. You can see right now, it's, it's actually been happening for 10 years. It started with Yarraville. Um, and, and let's leave Williamstown out of it because I think with its waterfront location, it's always, well, for, for a couple of decades, it's been different. You know, one of, one of the councillors, uh, Michael, talks about how Yarraville led the, the, the uh, gentrification of the West. And, and, I, and I think that's a fair comment. And, and, then, and of course that spread so very quickly. Seddon uh, became popular, but West Footscray all of a sudden seems to be somewhere that's doing quite well. Uh, I've got friends who live in Albion, uh, where they've been able to buy, you know, sort of 40, 40 year old houses on nice big suburban blocks. Uh, Sunshine is absolutely, you know, there's a, a ton of money being spent in the hub there and, and it's looking fantastic and I hear there's a lot more, uh, than, you know, they've got a new cultural arts centre being built. So I, I think that will just keep spreading and, and it makes sense. I mean, even if you look out as far as Tarnit through to Werribee, it's still a lot closer to be buying affordable housing in Tarnit than it is on the other side of town. I mean, Tarnit is 30 minutes from the city. The equivalent priced housing on the other side of town is at least an hour. So I still think there's great value in the West and there's still uh, vast pockets that have, have yet to be developed. You know, and again, bringing more young families who, who uh, want to be entertained, they, you know, they want to go out to eat. So there's, uh, I only see um, you know, positive growth for the next 10 to 20 years. I think that's one area I'd, I'd love to work out, how do we make it easier for those people to get around? Um, and especially as they get older and then they don't have transport, uh, we, we have a lot of groups that come here, you know, probus type groups during the day, but it would be great to see how from a transport point of view. And generally I, I would encourage governments to look at, if you use the pop-up park, which is now the permanent park as an example, I think as an activation measure that that is such a small area and really such a small cost to, to just put a mark on the village and, and things like that could be done in other areas. So it might not just be for Yarraville, but with, with the work that's happening in Sunshine at the moment, I, I know there's millions of dollars being spent on the arts precinct, but, but make sure that you create areas where the community can just relax and meet. I mean, one of the things I've noticed about the park is people don't come and sit out the front for hours on end, but it's where they now meet. And they might, they, they meet and then maybe come to the movies, or they meet and go and get a drink or go, go shopping, but, but it's a great meeting place. And, and it's such a delicate balance between getting something like that to work where people love it and, and watching the way kids interact in it is, is, is just heartwarming. And then being in the Footscray Mall where it just doesn't quite have that, that soul. And I'm not a town planner, so I can't, I, um, I can't quite put my finger on why it works sometimes and why it doesn't, but, uh, but that's, what you, that's what you have to make sure is that you can create community spaces that, that people love uh, and just want to keep coming to.